It's time for the after show of the Improbability Engine, and this week we talk about movies again, suspense thrillers, and at the top I want to mention Jaws, and it could have fit into the horror movie category. Uh, when it came out, it was uh, as big a box office hit that summer as anything that, uh, you know, came out in the 70s, and maybe as anything ever if you uh if you account for inflation uh a lot of great lines in the movie and it was it was just a, a terrific film i i think so too and and when we talk about movies you you cannot talk about uh movies in a way that does not in some way capture their impact on pop culture right you can't tell me that when you hear da da Dun, 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 dun. I mean, that that emotes this huge, it's two notes. It's not like it's some layered orchestral kind of opus. It's two notes. And how many times do you hear someone say, we're going to need a bigger boat? All the time. I mean, really, it's it's one of those where you listen to it and you go, that's really good. You know what I mean? It's one of those that, that has it has been ripped upon and used by advertising. Taco Bell used it when they had their Godzilla tie-in back a long time ago. He's trying to catch Godzilla with the Chalupa or something, and he shows up and says, I think I need a bigger box. It's, it's one of those things that it's, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And, of course, my favorite part is when they're on the boat toward the end and they're just having a good time. And <laughs> um, farewell and to do to you, fair Spanish lady. <laughs> farewell and to do, you ladies of Spain. Which brings me to a sports reference that I, I would be remiss if I did not take advantage of, the fact that we're talking about <laughs> that song. <laughs> that was a great movie, when by the way. He goes up in there and he yells at the organ player, No more Lady of Spain! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, that's so good. Sorry. All right. So, Oh, and, and this doesn't apply at all, but I have to mention it because of Slapshot, and it fits. If you haven't seen Brock Meyer on the IFC channel or or seen it on on Amazon where you can buy the whole <sighs> season you need to watch the show it's the best show in years absolutely it's and hilarious it's so well i love Hank Azaria i've loved him since he was doing voice work for the simpsons he was in the uh, uh, the bird cage he i mean he's just hilarious hilarious guy this is definitely, I think, his best show. You finally give him a chance to, no, 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 go crazy. Absolutely. Just, just have a good Absolutely. Time. All right, so we're talking about suspense movies, right? Right, right. You know, you cannot talk about suspense movies without talking about Silence of the Lambs. I'm going to shock you here. I've never seen it. Oh. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice key empty. It's fantastic! It is so good! Have the lambs stopped screaming? Can you still hear them, Clarice? Quid pro quo, Clarice. You've got to watch that it's, movie. It's clearly one of your favorites. It is such a good movie. It is... It, first off, it's well acted. Let's just start off there. Jodie Foster as Clarice Starling, this young FBI agent... And then you've got Anthony Hopkins, who's an outstanding actor on his own right. But you want to talk about Go Crazy. Anthony Hopkins plays a doctor who is psychologically manipulative and a murderer and also a cannibal. Yes. I, I, actually, I, re I did read the book. Okay. Well, then you at least have the story down. Watch the movie. It's fantastic. It is. It is. It's multi-layered. It's you know you're you're searching through this stuff. It's it is pop culture. I mean, look no further than Jay and Silent Bob to to reference the killer Buffalo Bill. I mean, this is this is as good as it gets. I mean, that's how it works. Silence of the Lambs has to be on the best thrillers of all time. 
love Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> <laughs> they are the voice of my generation, and I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> love Dogma. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic movie. Not a suspense movie, but a fantastic movie. Hilarious. There's, there's this guy and girl in Dogma, and um, I'm, I'm not going to get into character names or anything like that. I don't want to go that deep. But anyway. <laughs> Especially uh, during the during the, 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 the guy gets the girl in a, you know, conversation and gets her to laughingly agree that, you know, if the world's ever about to end, she'll have sex with him. <laughs> and then the world's about to end, and he's like... Come on, let's do this. <laughs> it's fantastic. If you haven't seen that movie, watch it. All right, what's your next suspense movie? You, you have to mention Psycho. Um, you know, I think that's right. A Anthony Perkins is incredible in that movie, and uh, disarmingly good. Yes, and I mean, God, you just this young Anthony Perkins. He's handsome, but he's boyishly handsome. He is the most non-threatening character that you can imagine. He plays this. This guy, yeah, who has a thing with his mother, <laughs> and you yeah. know, it's it's weird. Fantastic movie. Watch the original, but also, you're telling me that the show, the the recent remake, show Bates Motel, is is very good. There you go. But, That's good enough for me. Yeah. I mean, the the movie is fantastic. When I saw that they were doing Bates Motel as a as a television show, I have to I have to tell you, I was filled with large amounts of dread, uh, just because. You can't recapture oftentimes. You know, you can't capture those things again. And you know, during our, our talk about horror movies, we talked about Let the Right One In. Yes. They're doing a TV show on that. Of course they are, because why wouldn't they? <laughs> I bet the vampires sparkle. But <laughs> I'll, I'll say this, though. TV shows today, by and large, are better than they've ever been. I think that's probably right. I think I think what you're seeing is because of the collapse of the movie industry, uh, the studio system that set up movies and they, they pumped out a lot of money into movies, now movies are, are basically either $100 million hits or $100 million flops. There's no real... There's no real small movie anymore right. uh, that's, that's done inside the studio system. So what you'll find is that these really great scripts are now coming into these really great actors. And... You have, you have cable, this expanded basic cable kind of concept that says, yeah, we're not looking for a sitcom. We're not looking for, we want something with some, some body and some substance. And, and they've embraced real. story arcs. They which have. If you, if you go back to the 70s, there were no story arcs. No, there. everything, you know, <laughs> you watch Three's Company and you don't have to watch last week's episode to know what's going on. Right. Absolutely. And most people didn't. <laughs> so, so true. Um, Come on, knock on you, have a, door. <laughs> you have another. Uh, yes, another one that uh, that was really impactful on me. Seven. Okay. Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, and Kevin Spacey. Now, those three actors unto themselves are. Amazing. Brad Pitt's a very good actor. He's an underrated actor because he takes action movies, but he's a good actor. Morgan Freeman is the voice of God. Call it what you want. Almost like John Facenda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got Kevin Spacey. Now, Kevin Spacey, Academy Award winner, amazing actor. You have him as the bad guy. And you watch this, it's a crime drama. It's a crime drama, that's all this is. And it just keeps building, and it builds stranger, and it gets weirder and more powerful. And to the culminating point where you look at it and he goes, what's inside the box? Oh, what's inside the box? I mean, it's just fantastic. A great movie. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It is a very good movie. It'll turn your stomach. It's going to be one of those things that you're not going to be happy with, but it's a fantastic movie. The Others. The Others is good. That gave me the creepiest, eeriest feeling. Now, it, it does not terrify you. No. It does no, no, not no, no. shock you, but you're sitting there, and it just creeps you out. Yeah, and, and once you see that movie, you know, it's 
it's as close to black box theater as you can get. Because frankly, where they are and the setting, it's important, it plays a role, but the movie is so intimate. I mean, you're talking about a mother and kids. You know what I mean? Like you, right. it's 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 an interpersonal, tightly woven movie. It's it's eight characters. It's not even I mean, there's not a huge cast. And as much as you try to make it into this big house or this big area or the the fog covered road or whatever what you're seeing is the interplay between two actors and the just fantastic way the script is done awesome movie i'm going to give you two others okay audrey rose with anthony hopkins okay uh, it's about reincarnation but uh very good suspense thriller right and, and i'll always remember uh at the end where he's hypnotized her and he's trying to bring her back and he's like audrey audrey rose uh that just rings in my mind and then for reasons completely unrelated to the movie the reincarnation of peter proud um i was a freshman in college innocent kid <laughs> didn't know anything <laughs> about anything so um I took this girl to see the reincarnation of Peter Proud, and I come back and I kiss her goodnight at the dorm, and suddenly her tongue is in my mouth. It was the first French kiss I ever had, wow. and I was just like, I really like this. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I agree, and I vote. No, that, that's, that's always a good thing, and you're always going to find movies that are like that, that, uh, that have a tie kind of outside the movie, um, and there's so many... There are so many good movies out there that that people don't watch for some reason, or they they have a cult following, and and you don't understand it until you watch it. We talked about Jay and Silent Bob. We talked about Dogma. Kevin Smith is the king of the cult movie. Yeah, because they're they're different. They're dialogue driven. They're character driven. They're we funny. should we they're, should do cult movies next. That's gonna well. There's gonna be a lot of Kevin Smith because I I personally I like Kevin Smith. Movies. I do so, too. Um, I I I like the fact that they talk, that they're witty, that that the characters aren't two dimensional. You know, you'll have weirdos, but they're weirdos in real life. That's how it should be done. You should be able to connect, and I think that's a good thing. Have you seen Mulholland Drive? I have. Would you call that suspense? You know what? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't go as far and say that's a thriller, but it is a suspense movie. I think that's I think that's a, a, a fair a fair assessment of it. And, and it kind of reminds me, it's Sixth Sense is right, another one right. that's suspenseful. It's it's more of a thriller because there are more overtly scary scenes. But when you look at a movie like Sixth Sense, Shyamalan is is interesting because he he does strange things with his movies. Right. You know, the parts that should be scary, he tries to make less scary. And the parts he try, that aren't scary, he tries to make them scary. Well, and and he's it, had, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. He's had such an uneven career. Oh, my God. Because yeah. he's made great things like Sixth Sense, and then he's made other things that are just, oh, my God, horrible. And, and I think that's the risk you take. He, he, any good filmmaker wants to push the edge. And sometimes that means that you miss. Well, you and know? David Lynch, who was the director of Mulholland Drive. Uh, the king of pushing the, the envelope. Absolutely. <laughs> you want you to know. talk about a guy who wants to embrace the weird. Oh, my gosh. See Mulholland Drive. I don't want to give away the secret to that movie, but he explored that secret in Wild at Heart. Yeah. He perfected it in Mulholland Drive. Yeah, and, and Lynch's, Lynch's work is always... There are people who love Lynch's work, and there are people who absolutely despise it. Right. They're like, that's trash. There's it's no in-between. There's no in-between. He's one of the most polarizing people I've ever seen as it comes to the movie business. And the movie business is a polarizing field. Now, so. he, he also did the TV series Twin Peaks. I was in Nashville, okay? Yeah. yeah. And so we're looking for a restaurant. I'm like, oh, there's this restaurant called Twin Peaks. Oh, my. 
Somebody took the David Lynch TV series <laughs> and made a chain of themed restaurants about it. I was so excited. Oh, I was so excited. Rushing disappointment follows. That is not what that is, Will. They were different kinds of peaks. They were completely different. Uh, no, when you talk about it, Lynch's work in Twin Peaks, um, you 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 look at something that is derided by so many people as bad acting or bad writing or you know what is it it's a, it's like a it's a melodrama it's not even a drama it's a melodrama but then you see where the impact is on the culture around it and it's huge the simpsons riffed on it I mean, it's it's one of those where you just got to go, yeah, it's kind of everywhere. Lynch's work, you can't just go in and be a passive observer. No. You have to think. It makes you think. Right. You have to figure it out. Even if your thought is, what the hell is going on? You're active in it. You're not. You're not just standing by. And there are scenes like like I can mention this one scene in Mulholland Drive without giving anything away, where these two women wind up in a theater with a woman on stage singing the Roy Orbison <laughs> song, crying in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the funny thing is, is whenever we talk about these, the, the influential uh, new wave of, of guys that, you know, you look at um, Quentin Tarantino, guys like that, um, they owe a lot to Lynch. I think Lynch paved the way and kind of, showed people that weird can work and then you have you know richard rodriguez or or, or quentin tarantino are really good examples of this where you can explore your weird into genre you know the, the west quentin tarantino's westerns quentin tarantino's war movies uh quentin tarantino's cop movies or or, or you know shoot 'em up gangster movies these are really well overplayed genres but because you have the free reign that David Lynch kind of introduced into modern movie making and saying, look, be as weird as you want. You can say, well, I'm going to take a little bit of weird and I'm going to put it with a Western and I'm going to make Django Unchained, which is one of the best Westerns of all time. So, I mean, you, you have that cultural phenomenon. I think David Lynch is a fantastic example of that. And I mean, that's it's a powerful tool to have in a filmmaker's toolbox is, no, no, be weird. It's okay. You can be strange. You can put something in that doesn't quite fit. That's okay. As uh, we wind up talking about suspense thrillers, yeah. I will mention The Bad Seed. Uh, I'm going to try to find a clip to put in there. Gotcha. And, uh, it's about a little girl who may or may not be a serial killer. <laughs> which is great that's a great premise right i mean you know anybody who's had kids you've had that thought <laughs> you go oh my god you know and as many times as you go my kid could be a president of the united states every once in a while you look at him and go damn i might be raising you know norman Bates. <laughs> this is what i anticipated here that happens I think we'd be remiss if we didn't, I know we've talked some about Hitchcock, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention um, Rear Window, oh my, North by Northwest. Movie. I mean, the, those, those were... Rear Window is one of my all-time favorites. Extremely well acted. Extremely well shot. I mean, it is a genre-defining movie. It kind of set that, that in motion. North by Northwest also, you know, when you have... You know, Cary Grant running and the planes flying in behind. I mean, it's it's it takes the over the top action of the black and white, the 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 old uh, silent movies, and it takes it one step further into this film realm of Technicolor and you know at the time high tech shots. It's beautifully done. It's well acted. They're suspenseful and they're great. Hitchcock is the king. I mean, when you're talking about suspense, as a kid watching Nick at Night. I watched Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and it, it, The Outer Limits and uh, Twilight, Twilight Zone, Zone. They, they would scare me to no end 
to the point where I wanted to watch another episode. And that's really all you can ask for. You know what I mean? That's all you want out of those things. So you got you got to tip your cap to Hitchcock, King. That brings to a close this edition of the Improbability Engine. ice on the steps, and I slipped and fell against her, and that was all. That was all? No. I slipped on purpose. 